Welcome to the new episode of my video blog, completely non-regular video blog. I simply film a new episode when I have some ideas, some things to share, and when I find the time, the two things do not always coincide, but today the stars are right, so here we are filming. There are a couple of things that I want to uh, talk about in this video, and of course they all have to do with the best hobby in the world, which is the board gaming. and uh, these things are uh, my upcoming trip to Italy, uh, which while actually unrelated to gaming directly, uh, has given me an opportunity to figure out some ideas about traveling with games and ways to pack a bunch, a large bunch of games while you're traveling. Uh, we'll talk about print and play games uh, because that also intersects the previous topic and at the end I want to tell you briefly about uh, my projects to attend Origins Game Fair in early June. Starting from the beginning, um, in two days uh, I'm going to Italy and stop right there. If you're already thinking, oh gosh, now I know when he's not gonna be in the house so I can go and burglarize it and steal stuff from him. Be warned, there, there are going to be constructors working around the house during the day and house sitters in the evening and at night. Actually the thing that worries me the most is that house sitters may start playing some of the games and then not get the components back in the right boxes. Now that would be pretty scary if I find out that something like that happened when I'm back. But back to my previous point. I'm going to Italy uh, for some two weeks. I'm attending a wedding of a relative of mine and then uh, I'm simply hanging out uh, with the Italian branch of my family and then we are also going uh, with my wife and my daughters uh, to the sea, to uh, seaside location, uh, Rimini, for those of you who know where that is, a great place to bring kids. And I think that I will have time to play games, probably more than usual, uh, because the semester is over, if nothing else for that reason. Um, I have more time right now. I'll teach a class later in the summer, but this is sort of like a month in between the two things when I will have uh, uh, extra uh, time to play games. Also, my parents are there, which is uh, my children's grandparents. And trust me, they will want to spend some time with the kids, they will want to do activities with them, so there will be times in which uh, I will simply stay home and I will be able to play some stuff and then I'll play stuff later at night when everybody's asleep. So gaming, 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 great gaming opportunities on the other side of the ocean and you have to drag the games there. It's a small town, the one where I live in and when I will stay uh, most of the time. Um, so. I have to bring my games from here. But how do you travel when you think you're gonna have time to uh, play some games without uh, overburdening yourself with, with heavy, large games? Uh, this is a problem actually I started worrying about only recently. Back in the day, I would just pack whatever game I wanted to play and I would bring it with me. As long as it was a game that was so inter-friendly, um, doesn't matter that I was traveling or not, I would simply bring it with me. And I'm pretty serious because I remember once I went on a trip to Seattle, for a conference and I wanted to bring a game uh, to play in the evening in my hotel room, a game that could be played in solitaire, and I brought Legends of Drizzt, <laughs> a huge box. Um, I learned better. I learned better since I learned that there are ways of enjoying yourself while you're traveling with games that are light and not too big. And one way uh, to go about it is to, um, to, for example, play folio games that come in a Ziploc bag or uh, print and play games, which usually are lighter, meaning they have minimal components. You can print the maps on paper, you make your own counters. Uh, some of these are free, some, some games you need to pay in order to be able to print them and then play them. But uh, usually they occupy less space, uh, they take less space, and 
and they travel better than um, than other kinds of games, than PUBG games. Also, something happens, you lose your bag or whatever, the craziest thing happens as you're traveling. If you have lost a copy of a game that you made yourself out of paper that was coming out of your printer, that is less of a loss than if you lose a nice game or it gets damaged somehow uh, during during the trip. So just the idea uh, to me that most print and play games uh, take less space and are lighter was very attractive. Um, so I started by making, by printing and making two games that I'm planning to bring with me. So you can also see this as a preview of future reviews. At the same time, just a suggestions of some games that are there and that may be, may be good in a travel situation. Now, the first game that I printed out and I made is Reconquista. It is a war game, a solo war game. Uh, the solitaire option is also very important to me. When one is traveling, one very often has less chances of playing with people, especially when he's traveling for work and not going to a game conference. And so uh, it's pretty good if you have solitaire games. This is a game, I'll just read the description here. The Conquist is a solitaire game simulating the reconquest of Muslim Spain by the various Christian kingdoms from the 9th to the 15th centuries. I had heard uh, very good things about this game and I saw that it was being published. It had been available as a free print and play uh, for a while and then I saw that it was also now published by White Dog Games and as I went on the website I thought oh, well maybe this seems like an interesting game I'll purchase a copy and I thought about purchasing the the file so I could then make my own copy which is here then I also realized that actually the files, uh, the free files with the full game are still available online, I'm uh, still on BoardGameGeek, so if the publisher had nothing against those files being there, I didn't see why not. So instead of purchasing the game, I simply made my own copies out of the free files that they found on BoardGameGeek. It's a game I look forward uh, to playing, it seems interesting. But there is another print and play game, another war game that I'll bring with me and that I look forward to even more uh, because it's a game that I've heard really good thing about. People seem to be incredibly excited about. And this game is Don't Tread on Me, the American Revolution Solitaire board game. Uh, this also is published by White Dog Games now, so you can choose the box edition, the phone edition, or the print and play edition. And in this case, I couldn't find any free, uh, free files out there, not anything that seemed legal or, or moral to print. And so, well, simply enough, I purchased the file. I wasn't all that expensive, and then I made my own copy. This is also the first time, usually when I um, when I make my own print and play games, I simply use cardboard and I use the back of cereal boxes. The counters are not super thick, the counters uh, don't look super nice, especially the back, but they're really easy and quick to make. This time, I thought, oh, this is a game I'm gonna love, I'm gonna put some more effort in creating this game. Um, I decided for the first time to experiment making a game using using foam, using, uh, I don't remember the technical name, it's uh, sheets of foam that I bought at CVS in the stationery, in the stationery section, and that I used to uh, attach boards, uh, uh, to attach posters during presentations. So I simply glued the counter sheet from the files on that sheet of foam and cut it with an exacto knife and scissors and uh, the edges really did not look good uh, to the point that I decided actually to use a marker and to mark and to kind of like color the edges so that all of the imperfections, all of the weirdness, the strange texture of foam as it came out after I cut it are less visible. You can still see them, but they are less visible. And I thought, well, if one of the reasons was that foam counters can be more easily stacked, I think it actually. Uh, it can be interesting if I have stacks and I can see from the side of the stack the the color and for the 
the alliance. So I have the Americans, uh, it's about the American Revolutionary War. I have the Americans that are blue, I have the British that are red, I have some counters that are green, things like that. So there's an advantage there, I think they're gonna be very practical, very functional, they're still super light and super small, so they travel well. If you have more ability uh, than I have, uh, this could be another option to print uh, to print and make the counters for your print and play games using uh, using foam, uh, poster board, the presentation is called something like that. I don't remember exactly, but don't try to make the American Revolution solitary board game, which travels well and light. Another thing is that if I'm in Italy and my suitcase really gets heavy with books that I bought there, comic books that I bought there and I don't want to bring any of these games back, I don't have to. I can simply remake them when I when I come back here. And in this case, now I, I'm kind of like torn because I spent a lot of time putting together these not so good looking foam base counters. Uh, so these ones I will really want to bring back. Oh my gosh, the color on the screen changed. What happens if I put this one here. Why am I orange all of a sudden? Let's try to balance the colors. See? This camera thinks uh, it or he or she is smart, but you are not camera. I can still trick you. Then I thought, what could be another way of bringing a lot of games with me in a light form, um, maximizing space? Would it be great if I figured out a way of uh, bringing one single set of components uh, and then many games that could work with those components. Uh, I know there are ways of doing this, uh, but since I am a war gamer, um, or at least a lot of the games that I play are war games, um, I wanted to see if that could be done with war games, and then I realized, of course, that it could as long as it was done with miniature games. So the first thing that I did, I went on Junior General, a great website, a great resource for miniature gamers that uh, are on a budget and or simply do not uh, enjoy the process of painting miniatures, of collecting those miniatures. It's a huge amount of work for gamers that just want a game. Uh, that's a great source for paper miniatures. They still look decent, uh, but of course do not have the feel of uh, actual miniatures. But they're perfectly functional. You can use the rules of any uh, war game with miniatures made of paper instead of whatever metal, with whatever paint, with whatever glitter you could otherwise uh, put together. So I went on Junior General and I simply started making um, counters about ancient warfare. I printed a lot of counters about, well, representing ancient Roman troops and um, and Carthaginian troops. So I got some, I got a, a bag of Roman cavalry and, and siege machines. I have other, I have a, a bag here with light troops. And this is, yes, on the back of cereal boxes. Lot of these things, were, there were more. Oh, uh, they must be in one of these bags here. But this is the basic idea to put together a set of counters representing military units of the ancient time. And once I have these, then I thought that I can travel with several sets for miniature games in ancient times. And I can use them all. I can play many games with these as long as I'm happy with the miniature gaming about ancient warfare, which I am. Which I am. It's it's a period, a uh, style, a type of warfare that I enjoy simulating in my war games. Even though it's a very broad term, it's not like ancient. <laughs> ancient warfare means uh, 20 years in a specific location. It's a broad umbrella uh, label for a family of games and styles of warfare that I enjoy exploring. So, some of the uh, rules that I uh, purchased uh, uh, in a published form or printed out. Basic impetus. Impetus is a set of rules, is a set of rules 
um, about ancient warfare. It is published by an Italian publisher, if I remember correctly, the irony. I'm gonna play it in Italy. I, when I don't live in Italy anymore. Um, Italian publisher, and there is a full version that you have to purchase, you have to spend your hard-earned money, but there's also a basic version which is free for, for print and play. If I remember correctly, because I printed out some time ago now, uh, it wasn't on Board Game Geek that I found it, but on Board Game Geek I found the link to the publisher, and on the website of the publisher I found the free files. So, with the rules of impetus. Now, I have several uh, systems of rules here and they may not uh, all have the same scale, then I'll simply adjust things a little bit, I'll redo some of the distances, some of the of the, uh, of the calculations. I think that I can still play a variety of games, even though these games may have been conceived for different scales using uh, different sets of rules. So the first set of rule that I'm, rules that I'm bringing with me and the I'm curious to explore is a basic impetus. Then I went on a Junior General again, the source for miniature or for paper miniatures, and I also purchased. Uh, no, I also printed because the stuff there is all free, and I also printed the rules of several of their games. So they don't all, they. Uh, have more than just uh, uh, miniatures, they also have sets of rules for very basic, very simple games um, that in fact have been designed mainly for pedagogical purposes um, but some of these may be interesting to play just as simple introductory games and uh, if they are just pedagogical tools that is still interesting to me because I do teach college classes in which uh, we talk about warfare, we think about warfare, we think about ways of investigating and understanding history and warfare in an historical context, well then I am the perfect person that can benefit from pedagogical tools that I can in fact use in my classes. So I just printed out a couple of, of rule sets for different games and these games are based on battles, so each battle has its own specific set of rules. So I have here one for the Battle of the Thermopylae, uh, a set for the Battle of Zama, a set for the Battle of Cannae, a lot of stuff that I can do with my, with my um, paper, miniature counters, top-down ancient counters. I have two more sets of rules um, for ancient warfare that I can use in my counter. See, there are a lot of ways that you can put these little guys to good use. Um, another set of rules, so this is a printed one, printed by the designer who is also the publisher. It's a small publishing house uh, fueled by love more than anything. Um, it's fueled by the creativity of Chris Angle. Chris Angle uh, is the creators of a system for uh, simulating conflict. It's a narrative-based system uh, that he, as a therapist, uh, uses in um, in psychological therapy, as is uh, acting as a consultant, I believe, in sort of a group therapy. But then you can use that uh, narrative interactive system also to simulate other types of conflict. So he has created games around this idea. And I'm definitely going to use that narrative-based um, system that he has created in some of my classes when we talk about warfare. Also, he lives like five miles from here. <laughs> I just realized recently, I had no idea that he lives in Evansville, Indiana. And that's kind of crazy. So actually, I can also invite him to come to my classes if I have questions. I can knock on his door at 3 a.m. Chris, how the heck do you resolve this? Uh, but not really, not when I'm in Italy, which is where I'm planning to play this rule, these rules. As you can see, very Spartan, very uh, basic. It's a sheet of paper uh, that probably originally, at least the cover, was supposed to be something else, because it's something printed upside down, with more sheets of paper folded in and stapled. It's as simple as it gets, but if the rules are good and I have fun playing with them, it's more than enough for me. It's called Ritter, R-I-T-T-E-R, -T and what's interesting is that it's a diceless battle game for ancients and medievals. I haven't read it yet, I don't know anything about it, but diceless gaming? I'm interested. Let's see what how that works. And finally, 
I want to find it to take the opportunity of playing um, a system of rules called the Bellis Antiquitatis, the system I had heard uh, good things about. I'd heard that the simple, approachable, and yet realistic. It captures a lot of situations. And the rules are available for free, at least some of the versions of the rules. But then I saw on Amazon uh, a book called uh, Start Ancient Where Gaming. Start Ancient Where Gaming using the Bellis Antiquitatis 3.0. So well, I decided uh, to purchase it. First, because I didn't find really the uh, version 3.0 online for free, but that may just be me not being able to find it. There are interesting ideas and suggestions on how to start making your own terrain, your miniatures. This is not my primary interest in word gaming, but maybe some of my students will be interested so I can teach them some stuff based on the stuff that they learn from here. And then the book teaches you the, the game itself, which is, to me, very interesting. I think it is. Um, I hope it is. But I really don't know much about it. So I have, oh, how many? It's like, Bellas Antiquitatis, Ritter, at least three or four battles from Junior Generals, and Impetus. It's like six games that I can play with, uh, with this. I'll also bring some cubes, some little wooden cubes so to keep track of things. I don't know exactly yet what other components will be required, but probably I will find something in Italy that I can use as counters, as tokens. I'll just bring a couple of... I will bring a bunch of cubes in any case, so they're, they're already um, dice, and I'll see what else I need. Speaking of cubes, actually there's another game that I'm bringing with me. Yes, I'm bringing a ton of stuff because when I travel I just want to be safe. I prefer not to play all that I have than to find myself uh, with an opportunity of playing a game and, and without a game around. If I were in my house, I'd be fine. Oh my gosh, there are two hours I didn't know what to do with and expect them to be free. I'll find something to play around here. Uh, in my hometown in Italy, maybe not. So better safe than gameless. I printed a ton of games. And another game that I printed, and but uh, it's not a war game. It's called Milky Way Express. Free print and play. You find the files on Board Game Geek. It's just a couple of pages, a couple of components to print. It seems to be a several hex game. I don't know that all the four hexes will be there. Uh, it seems to be a game about mercantile starships doing business and exploration in the space. I don't know that warfare and destruction and extermination will feature prominently. This one does require a little bit of tokens, uh, like yellow cubes and blue cubes and red cubes, but I'll bring those, which probably I will also need at some point to um, to mark things in the uh, we're gaming section of my travel collection. So Miku Express seems to be a pick um, Pick up and delivery game, um, econo based on economic uh, principles um, with the idea of exploring space that is always fun. And uh, it's solitaire. Uh, there's also a two player version, but it's playable solitaire. Finally, you think, God, gee, Mark, we really planned to, mm, to game every minute uh, that you are there. Uh, yes, yes, but I've also try to figure out ways of gaming while I'm traveling, while I'm getting there. And to do so, I uh, look for some small games, and now we get to this last pile here, to some small games that travel light, are easy to print, and I can carry with me easily, and also that will fit in a limited space so that I can play them on an airplane. And um, games that have all of these requirements and play solitaire are not all that hard to find, but it's hard to find good ones. Uh, there are a lot of those that are out there free to print and play, but then they're just kind of like meh on the meh side. But I did uh, remember that there was a game that had these requirements that I played in the past and I enjoyed it very much, and that was Airborne in my pocket. You can watch my video review for that one. Uh, 
And that is one of the games, so the In My Pocket family, that is a family of games that are very small, they fit in your pocket, kind of depends on the pocket, I guess, but overall, in general, they would fit in the average pocket. And um, they play solitaire, and they're interesting games of exploration in which you usually uh, flip cards that represent tiles of a location that you're exploring, and certain things happen to you, certain events happen, um, your energy may go down, or you may run out of time. You have a certain mission to accomplish while exploring locations before the time runs out. I believe that the first game in the system was Zombie in My Pocket, which has also been published professionally. Um, Airborne in My Pocket is a variant of that system in which you are a paratrooper that the par dropped behind the enemy lines in World War II and you are accomplishing several possible missions around and inside the German bunker. Um, as I said, several possible missions because that game had quite a big uh, fan uh, following and uh, a lot of uh, fan-based scenarios have been developed. So we, that's another great value for the components. With that, with those styles, with those components, you can play a ton of games if you just print out all the scenarios. But I also wanted to try some new ones. So I went online and I found uh, several games in the in my pocket category which fit all the my requirements of being uh, solitaire, friendly or simply solitaire, quick, small and it's not a requirement but it's a nice bonus they're also free. So one of these is called Fairy Tale in my pocket from what I've seen I haven't even read the rules so um, you travel around in a fairy tale land and you are slaying dragons uh, finding magical items to wake up the sleepy princess something like this Fairy Tale in my pocket since it's free to print and play, you can easily have a look at it yourself. The files on Board Game Geek, in case you're curious and want to learn more. Then we have one here, which is called 10,000 in my pocket. That's an interesting title, you have to admit. 10,000, all in here. Um, oh, and yeah, incidentally, Chia Pods boxes make for excellent containers of small games. Once you eat the Chia Pods, which are also delicious and healthy. And also they make for great boxes and they are stackable. Just, a, just an idea. 10,000 in my pocket is another saw adventure. This one is set in ancient Greece, but it doesn't seem to be a particularly realistic one. I, I believe that magic swords are involved and the gods uh, are involved as actual characters. I may be completely wrong. When, after I play the game, I'll review it. You'll know more, and so will I. For now, this is my hunch that there is a game in the in my pocket family set in some sort of ancient Greece and it's available for free for print and play. And finally, one that I really look forward to is called Raider in my pocket. So this one actually is super small, probably would fit in a much smaller bag, probably would not need the Chia Pod, uh, the Chia Pod uh, box. Raider in my pocket, I thought that was, this was gonna be like about Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, sort of like a fan-based idea, uh, which is not, but maybe somebody will get the idea of doing that. But in reality, maybe that's not necessary because Raider is inspired by Tomb Raider. But they did, it appears, uh, clever things in here to make all the references absolutely clear and obvious and at the same time deniable so that they will not get trouble from the, from the owners of the rights of the Tomb Raider franchise. So I assume that in this game you'll be an explorer going around and doing stuff. And maybe at the end you also do find the Lost Ark, so there will be a crossover there. So these are the games that I'll bring with me. It's, uh, it's a lot of games so that will come with me, will not be all that heavy and do not all have to come back. I think, it's, uh, I think I 
I'm pretty happy I figured out ways of maximizing the amount of gaming that I can do starting from a, from a single set of components and also without spending much. I did spend some time in the last weeks or so as I was well, when I was watching movies and I would simply make these games a cutting which also maybe accounts for my counters looking a little weird at times. Maybe if I had paid more attention they would look better but I cared not all that much. Because to me, gaming is mainly gaming and enjoying the components, well, definitely a pleasurable part of the experience is a secondary one. So, um, I also apologize in advance if you will not hear from me for a couple of weeks now, uh, because I'm going to be in Italy, and when I come back, I'm not uh, heading straight home in beautiful Bloomington, Indiana. I'll take a stop in Columbus, Ohio, where I will attend the Origins Game Fair at the beginning of June. Actually, I am traveling from Italy to New York City uh, the day before, traveling and flying from New York City to Columbus in the evening before uh, the game fair and then uh, being there ready and excited the day it opens. It, uh, I'll be there for the entire duration of the convention which is a first for me. It's a first in, in the sense that uh, this is my first time going to Origins and it's also this is my first time going to a game convention without being horribly pressed for time. I've been to Gen Con in the, for the last two years and it just felt like, sometimes, in a sense, it felt like work. I wasn't able to stay uh, for the entire duration of the event. I was just trying to pack so many things to do that at the end I was, I don't know. I, I, I loved it, I enjoyed it, but I also have mixed feelings because I was so exhausted. And so, in a certain sense, bothered by all the things that I saw were there and I did not have the time to enjoy which, by the way, is something I have to make peace with uh, in any case, because there's no human being whatsoever that will ever be able to do all that's worth doing at Gen Con. So if it's a matter of choosing, um, the, 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 the dilemma will always be there. In Origins also, but since I will objectively get to try more stuff, I believe that in this case the dilemma of choosing will be less painful actually will be able to enjoy the things I do not just look at the things that I wasn't able to do uh, I'm scheduled uh, to participate to some of the game events so I simply register to uh, events based on games that I want to try um, for example games that I haven't tried yet and that have just been released or they will be released in next week maybe they're that's the first time they show them, I don't know exactly, but games that are pretty new and that I haven't tried yet. For example, there is a game by um, by Eagle Gryphon called um, Clockwork War. It seems to be a fantasy steampunk uh, uh, game with a lot of layers to it and, and basically a conflict-based system. Um, for Saturday night, I believe it's for Saturday night, I'm gonna play a campaign of, of Descent, a mini campaign of Descent um, by Fantasy Flight and things like that. Now, of course, I should have written a note, you know, on top of my head, I can't remember the other events that I signed up to. Um, a game of Formula E, because that seemed to be interesting. Other than that, other than these events, I'm pretty open and I try to schedule these events in the early evening, late afternoon, uh, between usually 6 uh, and 9, so that uh, that slot more or less is always uh, is always taken. Sometimes it goes on a little longer, for example the mini campaign for the Descent game it takes more than just two or three hours, so, but overall the idea is that uh, I will do stuff as the uh, main part of the game fair is open. Uh, maybe then I'll eat a quick dinner, a quick snack, and then I'll do some gaming and still won't be too late for some other impromptu gaming later. So between 6 and 9, 10 p.m. I'm usually going to be busy. Um, and I paid for this event, so I think I'm really going to attend them. Uh, but other than that, I'm really flexible. Um, actually, I'm scheduled to play Federation Commander with a viewer of my videos. Hi, Jeremy. I look forward to uh, meeting you in person and to 
and to play with you. Um, another thing, oh yes, Columbia Games has been nice enough that I have decided they want to send me a preview copy of their game Last Spike, which is on Kickstarter right now. Um, but I, I, I'm not gonna get it now, drag it all the way to Italy and then drag it back twice against uh, across the ocean to then play some three hours by car from my home. So we haven't figured out exactly how they'll deliver it, but uh, they really want me to have it there. And I want to have it there because that'd be a great opportunity to play it with a lot of people. It seems to be an interesting game. And I don't know, maybe they'll give it to some gamer that's going there, they'll ship it to my hotel. We'll figure it out, but that's another of the things that I will do. But generally speaking, I'm going to be very open, very, very flexible. So, send me a message. Are you going to Origins? Then just let me know. If you want to meet up and play some games, just feel free to contact me um, from... Mainly uh, on Board Game Geek, that's probably the best way to communicate. Feel free to leave a, a comment in the comment section on on the on my YouTube channel. But if you want to communicate directly, Board Game Geek is probably the best way. Just look for me. My username is Marnaudo, and send me a private message, comment in the comments on the video on Board Game Geek, and maybe we can get together and play a game or ten. I don't know. I'm just. I will just try to sleep as little as possible and play the heck out of um, as many games as possible. Try not to feel pressured, um, but also trying to play a lot of games and, and trying to enjoy them all. So, uh, this is a general idea. Also, I've never attended Origins. I don't know exactly what to expect. I'm hoping, uh, well, I've been told that it's much smaller than Gen Con, and I'm kind of looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to a more relaxed environment, which is based more on actually experiencing and enjoying the games than just going around like a, hung a hungry wolf trying to hunt down as many new games as possible, which is hard not to do when you're at Gen Con. So I really look forward to what I expect to be a more intimate, more personal way of meeting with, uh, with like-minded fans of this wonderful hobby and playing games with them. Also, if you have attended the, the fair in the past uh, and you have suggestions, recommendations, uh, things that you want to warn me about, feel free again, let me know. I am a complete newbie there. I don't know what to expect exactly and if you have knowledge and wisdom to share, again, contact me, write it in the section, in the comment section of this video, wherever you find it, and uh, I'll be glad to learn from you. I believe this is all for today. Thank you for staying with me for this entire video, if you have the patience to do so, otherwise uh, um, there is an index uh, here at the bottom of the screen, no, not in the screen, really. Uh, of the screen. I'm, I'm, I'm not a technology type that knows how to write stuff on their own video. Uh, but just look below and um, below the, the screen and you will find an index that will tell you um, where to find the different chapters uh, or sections of this video. Uh, if you're watching this video, probably it's too late for me to tell you that, but I don't know. I thought I would acknowledge it. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have a relaxed beginning of the summer. Uh, now that we go towards the, end, the the middle point of 2015, maybe you're also like I am, trying to starting to recap the first half of the year. It's an important moment for every gamer, so enjoy that, enjoy the memories, enjoy uh, the planning for the future games, but more than anything else, enjoy the games, because gaming is a wonderful, exciting amazing hobby and uh, and we are lucky enough to have figured it out so keep gaming have fun i'll talk to you in a couple of weeks when i'm back from italy and hopefully actually we'll get to see some of you at origins for now this is all and all i can say is like ciao ci vediamo <laughs>